So with the reveal of Half-Life Alex, uh, part of me said to myself, I think it would be a good idea to finish the Half-Life 2 betas because I did like a two and a half hour, almost two and a half hour stream of Half-Life 2's various beta iterations. And I missed a lot of good stuff. And I had many people from the community telling me I missed stuff and they made me lists. They made me guides. And so let us begin with Air Exchange. Air Exchange is a cut chapter from Half-Life 2. The Air Exchange mod takes the leaked content, it was very unfinished, and everything known about the chapter, and puts it into a more playable state. So, map, Air X, start. So this is stuff that was like really good stuff that we did not see at all. And um, once again, I, I'd implore you to watch the first part of this if you want to get more context as to what's going on here. This gun does not fire. So I do remember this bridge. I don't remember these lads. But, um, yeah, I mean, Half-Life Alex looks a little bit better than this, I'd say. but I'm going to take us through as many of these maps as possible. And, um... Yeah, this is not very City 17-like. Fuck. Alex is out. A guy stole a copy from E3. Considering the beta content I did earlier, if you told me someone stole a copy of Half-Life Alex, I wouldn't be surprised. Though, finding out how much people knew about Half-Life Alex early on was kind of surprising. A lot got leaked. Um... Alright, so... This is not stable. This is very much not stable. And has totally frozen yet again. All right. Um, map. Air exchange. Air X start. Concept. Now I have a list of maps that I want to get to. And um, Air X start concept. Not found. Weird. Concept. Eric's. Okay. Never mind. Eric's 01. Now that's not fair. Okay. I can't run and I don't have any weapons. You want Eric start? This is the second map. I just did Eric start. Um, there we go. You did Eric O one. No, I I know this is Eric O one, and I did Eric start a second ago. fix that. Uh, nothing here is particularly, like, mind-blowing. These dudes again. Alright, rock. What the fuck is this weapon? There were so many weapons in this game. And so many of them had the same utility as every other weapon. It's like... 
There's got to be a way to... They pared down this arsenal so much. But it would have been nice to find a balance. Like, maybe just two more guns? Two more guns! Just two more. You got the fucking... ...gun from Goldeneye here now. Those, those armbands look very Soviet. Good. Wasn't there some kind of original, like... Eastern European thing that was supposed to happen with Half-Life 2? Wasn't it originally set? In that setting? Yeah, and chat, don't take me literally, please. Well, City 17 is very Eastern European, but not like... Were they going for, like, a... Berlin Wall kind of feel, or... Am I just talking rubbish? Complete rubbish? Like, somewhere in my stupid memory, there is something about... Like, they were gonna go even more... They're gonna go le lean in into that even more. That's correct? Oh, okay. They were going for New York City. Oh, good. Oh, and I'm dead. It started out early in development more like New York City. Alright, which New York City? Because 80s New York City is very different from 90s and now New York City. So, how do we get this build? Air exchange. Because this is different than even the other shit that I did last time. Nineteen eighty four was an inspiration for this game. I believe that. These are maps that were found in the WC map pack fixed up. This is still the leak mod build of the leak engine. <laughs> leak engine. Also, everything is red. I think that's a glitch. Okay. Or maps. Hang on, maps. So that's the full listing. Um, but I am going to be doing... Like I said, I'm not here to play through all of this, like, consecutively. I'm sure you can, if you want to. But I'm going to show you a little bit of each one, because I've never seen it before. And I have some interest. So this is two, this is what we just did. Let's see, three. Yeah, if I start getting killed and... If I start... Um being bad at the video game, which is guaranteed to happen. I'm gonna skip to the next map. Modern day... Snake Eater. Oh. <laughs> Fucking hell! You can slow down the fire rate of the AK-47 by right-clicking. And it has multiple increments of slowdown. There we go. Oh, the old tried-and-true HEV charger. Good to know they still have these in the future. You know, the future future. Where does Gordon keep these guns? Interdimensional pockets. 
Oh, er early health charging uh, station. The fuck is this thing? It's like a, a surveillance camp. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, that's great. Hop wire. That's a good one. Dude didn't even feel it. Um, yeah, neat concept, but I could see this getting me killed a million times. Um... Can't even touch the what? All right, next map. Oh god, I have to do this quick. That noise. Oh, three remnants. It's weird. This is on the list, but it's not actually there. Oh one. Some of these maps are not even here. Um. Map demo. <laughs> Arctic. That just happens for. Hmm. Map. I don't know why these um, maps are not available. Map sniper. Am I missing something? It's supposed to be air exchange. This is all air exchange. Is there a different version of this stuff? see um maps let's do the thing again yeah it seems like a bunch of stuff is missing there's um for example there's sniper 029 so i don't know what build that's in but map rx06 what was i up to before rx05 These annoying fucks. I'm actually kind of happy they cut these dudes. I mean, maybe they could have given them a less annoying weapon. But they work well as props. Simple prop to occupy my time. Interesting skybox. This seems to be a build where, like, some of the reflections are looking pretty good, but it's still a weird in-between between Half-Life 1 and 2. Okay. Um... Yeah, I'll try 5. Or 6, rather. There's not... Vert 1, Vert 2, Skywalk 11, like, there's just a lot of stuff not here for some reason, and I'm very upset about that. And I'm dead. Vert is Vertigo mod. Okay, well, I'll have to load that, too. I think I have that. This goes back to Arex. Five. So this is a whole chapter. It seems to be linked. Not really much to it, but it is kind of cool. Right, let's go through the map list one more time. I think I've done the canals and towns and all that stuff already. Um, zoo shader. Okay. Alright, let me go back. Let's do... Yeah, Vertigo's not here. Part of the Vertigo cut chapter. Hang 
Hang on a second. I have another file. Uh, check which beta version you're doing. 2001 map pack. Let's try that. Okay. So again, this is a thing. It's like um, a mod launcher that has a, a, like 10 different versions or more. And so some of these maps are exclusive to different builds. Okay, so map Erex. Yep, there's the ones that are missing. Map Erex 02 slash 03 slash remnants. Let's see what this looks like here. And people. It's Bill Murray's brother. Bill Murray's brother. Bill Murray's brother. Now, he really does have a brother that looks like that. Brian Doyle Murray. It's like slightly reminiscent of that. This is a very empty map, isn't it? <laughs> it's big. It's just amazing how much they developed. I'm wondering if Half-Life Alex has the same amount of cut stuff. Okay, so... Map... Camo Room. I think I did Camo City, I didn't do Camo Room. Oh, I see. Interesting. That would have been a kind of a cool enemy. Half-Life Alex probably has Half-Life 3 cut from it. Jesus Christ, you're probably right. I gotta see what it looks like. With this bizarre texture. If it even works. No. Cool, though. Uh, okay, so... Map. Let's try... Demo. Arctic. Yep, all the other maps are here. So the first list... Just didn't have the right thing. Well, this would have been... Is that it? Is that what I think it is? I feel like the team that's making Project Borealis, I think that's the name of it, where they're trying to remake Half-Life in the Unreal Engine. I feel like they're using this as inspiration for their project. But yeah, finally, it's here. The Borealis, all we have to do now is, is just get in there and get the story. From what I understand, the Borealis was, uh, and I might have mentioned this on the previous Half-Life beta stream, um, this was originally like a really early thing that they were going to implement. This is something that they had in mind from the beginning, but then moved away from it, and then we're like, we'll come back to it. But yep, it is a boat, and it's, again, in between Half-Life 1 and 2 <laughs> in terms of quality, but it's pretty good. It is a boat. Boot. Oh. May as well go in. And it's nothing. This is the beginning of Time Splitters 2, by the way. Almost. Okay, so then we go to map deep. Okay, so this is Kraken Base. Hey, Barney. The hell are you wearing, Barney? Hey, uh, Brian Doyle Murray, kind of. Bought that beer, I- oh, oh, oh okay. Am 
That's Odell. Is that early Odell? Is this publicly available? It is. Okay, we might live longer if we work together. Yeah, I'll wait here. Roger that. Let's run like hell. Okay, I'll secure this area. It's Odell in Half-Life 2. He is Odessa. Yeah, we might stand a better chance if we team up. Okay, why do you have Barney's voice? That's weird. You should probably give it back. Look, they just, like, threw a bunch of shit at the wall to see what... ...stuck. While they were still developing the story and setting. This is kind of more like Star Wars than it is Half-Life. There's another Odell. Okay. For a character that has a, like, a specific name. Well, then again, I guess there's like a million Barneys in Half-Life 1, so... They decided not to do that in Half-Life 2. They're like, oh yeah, Barney, it's just one guy. Just one dude. Which Barney was it? Oh, that one. The one from the beginning. Wasn't that Otis? No! Is the Barney from Half-Life 2 the one you play as in Blue Shift? That's my question. It is. Okay. Okay. Some people argue that, but it's not confirmed. It makes sense. I kind of want Otis to come back, though. Otis was my favorite. Otis was my favorite Barney. Okay, so this is Vertigo, not the Counter-Strike map like I thought it would be. This is another cut chapter. And again, I'm seeing all of this for the first time, so many of you know this stuff better than I do. I am still very new to this. And it's, I guess, a chapter where you just... I mean, it's aptly named. You just climb a ruined building. Seems extremely... Extremely unfinished, but... Okay, let's try this one. This one was recommended, too. So I'm not gonna do all of these, but... Jesus Christ. <laughs> I look so bad. There's big, chunky, giant textures on giant buildings. But, I guess you can see the New York City influence a little bit. Oh, fuck. Very vertigo. Alright. Um, shortly after vertigo is... So we didn't do Skywalk. Or rather, this one's not after. There's, um, Rooftops is after Vertigo. This is just Skywalk. Oh, hey, Strider. More of that New York City stuff. This looks a lot better. These buildings, even with their weird repeating textures, still look a lot better. Yeah, now I'm seeing why people wanted me to do a part two to this so badly. I didn't even, like, get to most of the interesting early cut shit. Did you know that Kevin James got casted as Otis for the Half-Life movie before it got scrapped and then turned into Paul Blart? I did know that. 
That's very, very good in trivia. I like that a lot. Thank you. Is that real? Yep. Yeah, no. But, I mean... You knew that deep down, right? Same thing. Paul Blart, Half-Life. They're in, you know, the neighborhood. Same ballpark. Okay, now this is rooftops, which I feel like we just did a rooftops, but now there's more rooftops. Huh? You just throwing trash? So, I guess this was their, um, original idea for the rebellion scenes. Um, again, in the middle of a giant city of stone buildings. I mean, as a test, this is really cool. If I- again, chat. I- I guess it's kind of hard to convey, but I want to say... You'll see the Half-Life 1 assets being imported here, but... If someone made a Half-Life 1 map that looked like this and ran this smoothly in 1999, whoa, in 1999, I would have lost No Nut November. Because this is seriously like, I always wanted giant Half-Life maps. And this is still an improvement. It's just not quite Half-Life 2, it's not what it could have been, but I, I think this is still really impressive and really fucking cool to look at. Ooh, got a scripted event there. Okay, I see, I see. So these dudes... ...destroy that, and you can get over here. I guess they made the Stalker's accuracy shitty enough... ...that if you just move... ...you can get out the way. Fucking giant chargers, dear lord. Oh fuck! So I've been told to check out Sniper 029, which apparently is a very famous beta map. Nope. Cover! I need cover! <laughs> Get back, you idiot! Time for a one You two of you got a landmine! And that friggin' sniper showed up and took out our gun! Uh, <laughs> you could cover him! He'll take care of the rest! Ah, oh, this sucks! I'm going for it! Is that John? That's not John St. John doing that voice, is it? Because he did the voice of the soldiers in, in Opposing Force. That's Mark Laidlaw's voice. <laughs> Cover me. And one of them sounded like the, the grunts from Opposing Force, which, by the way, man, I'm, I'm overdue for an Opposing Force playthrough. But that's just a whole other thing. We can- we can wait on that. We can wait on that for a while. It's a short enough game, too. I could knock that out in, like, three streams. Blue Shift, I've never streamed. And... I kinda don't want to, but... I feel like after I do, um... After I do Black Mesa, it will be a good idea. Oh. No, Blue Shift isn't terrible, but it's just a little boring here and there, and I feel like, um... There's like a, a video explaining why it didn't end up working out so much, so great. And, I, and, like, they designed it for a certain thing, and then they ended up scaling it back. This is Red Shift. Um, so this is, yeah, Nova Prospect. Like, the prison scene... Why is this here? I, I died. Did I die and go to prison? 
Blue Shift was supposed to be Dreamcast only. Oh, okay. It auto-saved last stream on this map. Okay, so now these are maps. Here's a couple early um, maps that I missed of City 17, like early versions of what was to come later. And... Again, I'm so happy the game didn't release like this. <laughs> but, but... If this was like a Half-Life 1... If this came out two years after Half-Life 1... It would have been perfectly acceptable, I think, as, a, as like a follow-up, if it looked like this. But six years later, what we got was beautiful. I guess for people, um, people that don't really get the hype for Half-Life Alex, which again, there are limitations with that game. You obviously need VR to play it. It's not going to be something everyone's going to be able to experience. But just the fact that a new Half-Life is coming out and it looks so good. First of all, if anyone's watching this in the future, Half-Life Alex was revealed in between the first stream I did of this two weeks ago and now. Which is fucking bizarre. And people were like, Vinny, Vinny, you made this happen. And obviously I didn't, but it's kind of funny that kind of funny that that even happened anyway but uh the reason that half-life alex's reveal is is so crazy for so many people is because these games just if you were the right age at the right time when half-life was out it was like a new thing for first person shooters like i couldn't it was hard to go back to doom and quake for a little bit after half-life came out now i can go back easily because they're just great games but um it was big, and with the mods, you would just get lost in them. I was lost in Half-Life 1 for years, and 2. Um, and the fact that Alex looks as good as it does, and may lead to more Half-Life mods, and may lead to more Half-Life things in the future, it's pretty fucking exciting. So, even if the game ends up being a little gimmicky, which I think they're going to do a good job with it, they seem to give a shit. Um, we shall see. Someone in chat said Half-Life liter literally changed my life. It kind of changed mine too. Yeah, it was a really, really big part of my life for like 10 years. So. One of the earliest canals maps and uh, features bull squids. Bull squids were then, I believe, cut from Half-Life 2. But... This is what they would have looked like, I suppose. Gross. Speaking of gross... Oh, they fighting. It's amazing how far we've come with head crabs, too. Head crabs used to look like shittier versions of this than this than the Half-Life 2 final version and now they just look like raw chicken. Vinny, just a reminder that VR has come a long way since the DK2 that you own. I'm aware of that. Keep in mind too that I've played VR. I went to like um, a thing in New York City with Vives where they, um, it was like a VR space where you could go in and play a bunch of different VR games. So I've done VR with like semi-modern tech and, um... You know, it was cool. I had a good time with it. It's- it's- yes, you're right, the DK2 is very different. And, uh, I've gotten a lot of emails from people telling me, like, Vinny, here's a guide to some VR headsets that you might like. And... It sounds cool, and I may have to check it out, because I really want to play Half-Life again. But... Even though I've played VR, like, fairly recently, 
um, and, and in the VR space, like I said, it still didn't, like, blow me away to the point where I thought, this is the future. Oh my god. This is amazing, this dude. So apparently this is called the Cremator. Um, it has no AI. But that's really fucking awesome looking. And kind of disturbing. Uh... Vinny, does it have to blow you away? Um, to spend 600 to a thousand dollars on it, it might have to blow me away a little bit, yes. Isn't the part, uh, someone wrote in chat, a bad take, in my opinion, uh, isn't part of the point of Half-Life to be gimmicky. No. Uh, I feel like all of what Half-Life did changed the way, f uh, games went forward. With the gravity gun and the physics, it was totally 100% implemented into the gameplay in a meaningful way. Where you actually had to solve puzzles, defeat enemies, like, be a part of the world using you know, the things that were implemented in Half-Life 2. Half-Life 1 was a huge narrative shift. The way it did narrative was totally different than most games that were before it, like, especially first-person shooters. It just totally did not take you out of the action, got you the story, and did so in a way that was really, like, immersive for its time, and very interactive. So I don't think gimmicky is the right way to put it. I think, considering there's only two games in this series, what they tried to do was find a thing that they could work with and then build a game around that in a way that wasn't gimmicky. That's just me. VR... I know they're going to, um... Vinny, it's called Jurassic Park Trespasser. <laughs> I hope that's a joke, because that game is cool as fuck, but... That game is not something that you go back to very easily, is it? Um, the physics were really cool and it, fucking amazing. And also, looking down at your titties and seeing your health on a tattoo was really interesting. But as a game, that's rough. Vinny, where is the line between gimmick and innovation? Well, you know, I'm, I'm just some asshole, right? So, anything I tell you is just gonna be my opinion, and I'm not even that smart of a person. So, I can't give you, like, direct answers. But here's my thoughts, anyway, since you're watching my streams. Uh, here's, here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say gimmicky... ...is when... ...the mechanic... ...doesn't... ...feel like it's integrated well into the core gameplay. And instead, uh, um, hang on, this is what the Citadel is supposed to look like on the inside. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, it's, it's 3.30, it's 3.40 a.m., so I'm gonna try my best to gather my thoughts here, but I feel like a game that's gimmicky tries to force a mechanic on you that just doesn't integrate well with the rest of the game. And it's clear that it's like a selling point, and maybe one that, you know, doesn't quite work as well as you would think. It's a kind of a generalization, but that's the best I can do. Um, people in chat are mentioning Wii games, like motion controls. I'll give you an example. Um, Metroid Prime 3. I love Metroid Prime 3. I think it's actually a really good game, from what I remember. There's moments that are now specifically like Samus... You, you are her hand, and you have to use the Wiimote to unlock a door by turning it and pulling it out. Um, you have to solve various puzzles using motion controls. You have to, like, flick the Wiimote in certain directions in order to, like, do stuff that honestly breaks the flow of the game. And in Metroid Prime 1 and 2, you, you just play the game and you do all the stuff with the controller and it's fine. So, that's probably the best example, I think. But um, in Half-Life, it felt all very natural. Which is why I'm both excited about Half-Life Alex, and also... You know, VR, like I said, hasn't totally won me over. It's, it's won a lot of people over, and a lot of my friends really like it. But... 
you get to a point where... I guess I just need to see the proof is in the pudding. And I want to see the pudding. It's, it, you know, I'm just a little worried that I'm going to have to spend a thousand dollars on an index to uh, get to try the pudding. Now, I've been recommend- oh, hey, Alex. Um, I've been recommended other headsets that are not the Index, that are cheaper, that still are functional and work well. Some of which might even be better for the space that I have, which is very limited space, um, in my desk area. Um, so, on one hand, I want to try it. I want to give it a shot. But on another- on the other hand, it's like, well, shit. Maybe I'll just wait a little bit. Maybe I'll wait for the game to be out like a week or two. And then, if it does, um, stuff that's cool, and, you know, people seem to like it, I'll watch some videos of it, maybe then I'll check out VR. So that's kind of how I feel about that. That said, man, that trailer just got me so excited, and I never thought something like that would happen with Half-Life again. And I watched it, I'm like, oh god, the world looks so cool. I just wish that they would, um, use those visuals and go back to Black Mesa, or, like, Red Mesa, you know, across the desert, where a similar thing happens. Anyway, this is an early depiction of the Citadel, and, uh, this one looks a little bit- Whoa! More, uh, human. So... And that's the console. Rooftops 10. I'm just gonna try to get to all of the maps here. We're gonna go a little late tonight, but I'm not gonna go too late. Oh, we are for this one. Okay. Vinny, do you really expect us to believe you're gonna wait a whole week extra for a new Half-Life just for reviews to come out? I'm gonna try my best. I may fail. I may fail. I'm only human. But I promise you, I'm gonna try my best. Here's the other thing about it. It's not gonna be an easy thing, because I'm gonna to have to buy VR. Maybe buy the computer upgrade that I've been procrastinating for a while, just to play it. So... It's not just, like, buy game, and then that's it. It's buy game, and set up an entire thing, and spend a lot of money on a VR system. That which might be enough... to discourage me. So... We shall see. We shall see, but... Maybe we'll see even more of the game before it comes out. I mean, hey, we got a Game Awards coming up soon, which I will be streaming again. Which, uh, boy, I know that's not going to be a good idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. And hopefully we'll get some more reveals. Maybe Breath of the Wild 2 reveal. Maybe some more of that Half-Life 2 Alex gameplay. Can I just call it Half-Life 2 Alex? Or that's that's incorrect, right? Okay. Someone said Half-Life is just a game. It's not worth it. Major fracture. Yeah, a second. Um, Vinny, I genuinely appreciate the discussion about gimmick versus mechanic innovation. I've been studying games and interactive design, so your input is great. Well, chat helped. Chat definitely helped. But, um, I'm glad. I was gonna say, uh, someone said, why- why get all that just for one game? And it's... That's a good point, and, um... I suppose the answer- this is Starship Troopers, isn't it? Um, the answer would be... Considering this could be a watershed moment for VR, if the game is really, really phenomenal. Which is what they're trying to do, clearly. Um... It could lead to more innovation in VR. And it could lead to, you know, enhanced consumer interest. It could lead to more developers developing AAA games for VR. It could lead to, you know, a whole new thing. And more games. So, my answer is, you know, I would, I would imagine... I would imagine it could be, um, a big moment for VR if it goes really well. Is what I'm trying to say. But, um, those prices really need to come down.
Vinny, do you think that releasing this instead of three after all this time is a big slap in the face? Uh, I think watch my other video where I talk about Half-Life Alex for like 28 minutes. And I think that's a genuine concern. Unfortunately, I can't answer for Valve. I can't be the person that has any meaningful input on that. As a fan, I would prefer a traditional first-person shooter like this with um, those visuals and storytelling. And I kind of feel like we have to wait for Jeff Keighley's little uh, documentary about what Valve's been up to the past nine years to see where they lost their way, where they lost their motivation. Because a big part of why they didn't do more Half-Life and more games is because apparently things were pretty fucked up and they didn't have the motivation. And also Steam got so wildly successful, they were literally swimming in money and had to do almost nothing to get it. Which, uh, that's just me presuming. You know, I'm making presumptions by saying that, but if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. So I think, and that's just me presuming, like I said, so that's why the documentary would be important to have that information. I feel like it kind of suffers the same thing as the Mario 60, uh, the Nintendo um, thing with like F-Zero, where Miyamoto says like, we don't want to make an F-Zero because we don't know how to make an, a new one with innovation. And they did the same for Star Fox, where they only make a Star Fox game if they have um, a new mechanic, or in some cases, a gimmick. It's like, well, how about you just make a really good game with a good story, nice visuals, some, you know, deeper mechanics based on the previous entries of the series, um, a level editor for F-Zero, ship customization for Star Fox. Maybe, maybe there's a way to make a game that's kind of more of the same, but still really, really good. Vinny, go play Manhacks? I don't know how to. So apparently this is an arcade. This is a place where the citizens go to play a VR game in which they take the role of a man hack and kill innocent people. Turns out it wasn't a game. Oh, I see. I get it. Okay, so this... Okay, so the citizens think they're playing a game, but they're actually the man hacks killing innocent people and Gordon Freeman. That's kind of amazing and really perfect for the conversation we just had. Can I play this game, is my question, or do I not have the ability to do so? What if Half-Life Alex is just that? No, it was never implemented. Okay, it is now 3.50 and, um... I, there's a couple maps left, so I think I just want to do this now so I can maybe not have to do another part. It's late. I know, I, everybody. I, I apologize. This is going very, very late tonight. Just fly over the small tower in the distance. Press the button, spawn a man hack, and continuously create combine soldiers for you to play around with. Should be a button. Oh my god. Wow. Wow, it kind of sucks being a man hack, but this is also kind of really cool. Imagine this, but actual nauseating VR. This would, uh, I would hate this if this was a VR thing. But still, that might be one of the best ones I've seen yet. I had no idea they made playable man hacks in any capacity. I thought that would have just been like a Gary's Mod thing and that would have been the end of it, but that's awesome. Um, so this is Road 6. The puke part is the fun part, Vinny. 
Oh, well, clearly. Okay, so now we're going from um, on it to Tucson. Or was it Tucson to Threed? I'm not really sure. Or was it Threed to Foreside? Or was it th uh, Foreside to f Five Head? Or was it Five Head to Sixen? I don't know. Looks like the bus just takes you around. What if instead of a train segment, you got a bus segment early on and it took you through the city? That would actually be kind of cool now that I think about it. I wonder if Half-Life Alex is going to have an introductory rail segment. What if it is a bus? And it, like it's in the desert? Factory 08. So this is even more dystopia. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. What are they do? Are they like writing on pieces of paper? They're taking their SATs. We don't need no education. I mean, they definitely got kind of weird with the stuff like this in the Citadel, but seeing it here is very strange. You would think if they were like in a factory, they'd have computers or something that they'd be like, you know, making a game. Like, a, a Valve game. We're almost done. I'm sure I'm gonna miss a couple maps that are interesting. But, like I said, last time I was just playing whatever, and I didn't have, like, a guide. So this is nice to have. Okay, he is. This is a prototype of his base. So like an early version of Eli's. Um, did it have a name? Or was it just Eli's base? Alex still needed to undergo some outfit changes. Black Mesa East. Right. I should know that. I just streamed this game. He was Eli Maxwell at this point. Eli was pretty different from Vance early on. Oh, again, the building blocks of what would later become the final level are here. Um, test Wind 3. Haha! <laughs> Who's going to pick up all these cans? This reminds me of those balls they put in, like, tornadoes. To map them. Like in the movie, Tornator. Someone wrote Trash Raptor. Or, no, tra Trash Rapture, sorry. Okay, Seaguard 1 shows off Combine Synth Enemy. Motherfucker! Okay, this dude looks straight out of Quake. This could be a Strog. Vinny, the movie was called Twister? Oh, okay, I thought it was called Tornator. Cool enemy. Cool animations, cool weapon. Uh, not very Half-Life, though. So that's a nice try. It's interesting, but glad they 
consolidated their uh, their style. IHV test. IH, yeah, IHV test. Okay, this is kind of scary. I don't like this. I don't like that the face is like gooey, and, and but then you can see the mouth. It's like Homer Simpson mouth, and no, I don't. I don't like it. I don't know what that goo is. Player missile one. I'm too fascinated by this stuff to quit now. I'm sorry, everybody. But uh, we will definitely be done with this in about five minutes, maybe ten minutes. Okay, so this was an early test for player controlled rocket. <laughs> they run? Even the fucking. the UI for that's kind of cool, too. And then missile 2. Except it gets shot down. Call of Duty. <laughs> Call of Duty definitely borrowed this. Even if they didn't know they borrowed this. They didn't borrow this, they just made their own. Uh, J. F. Roof. Well, there's a 7 or an 8, so we'll go, uh, 8B. Guide missiles aren't a half-life invention. I know, I'm just being stu- I'm just being silly. There weren't a lot of- There were a lot of things. Interesting map there. Is that Kleiner? Is that supposed to be Kleiner? I didn't know Vortigaunts had like metal cod pieces. Oh, what are you, friend? What the fuck are you? Fun. Another New York City-esque building. I mean, there's no more New York City than this. But, uh, yeah, really interesting little map here. Even Barney's here? <laughs> map. Combine launcher, yes! Combine launcher. That building was actually one based off of, uh, it was based off of a building in Berlin. Well, I guess you can get more New York City than that then. It's a combine launcher. Oh. That's a combine launcher. Okay, I thought it was gonna launch combine. 50 assassins. Alien, assassin, enemy, no AI, data in the leaked code, but we do have models. Shoot the bastard to check his animations out. Impulse 101. You are one ugly motherfucker. Some fucking weird animations you got there. Okay. Map. We're almost done. We're, we're really getting there. Just a couple more. This is, uh, still not as late as when I did Bumbo last week. And we went to, like, 4.20 a.m. But, um, here's the Borealis again. This time... We're just gonna do a quick tour of the Borealis. And, uh, boy, these dudes are annoying, aren't they? But... 
Yeah, nothing particularly remarkable. I mean, the lore of the Borealis, the Lorealis, is much more interesting than what is actually here now, but I think if they did episode three, it would have been, it would have been real cool. I mean, I love the idea of like the, what was it, the fucking Philadelphia experiment with the boat that phased in. There's th this old tale, we can call it a conspiracy if you want, but of uh, this experiment where they, they warped a ship out of reality and it warped back and like crew members were fused it's an urban legend. We'll call it an urban legend, whatever you want to call it. But crew members <laughs> were apparently fused with the metal. And, like, the rest of the ship, they were like, oh, clown. You know, like, they came back from one reality into ours again. And, and like, they were, like, half... They were just, like, stuck in the floor, stuck in a wall. Just like that Star Trek episode. Uh, look it up. Montauk uh, thing. It's I guess it's the Philadelphia Experiment, right? But... You know, look it up. I'm sure you'll... Even if you think it's complete bullshit, which... Very well may be. Um... Very likely is. It's still an interesting story that when I was a kid, I read that. I was like, wow, that's so cool! I had this one book, I think I told you all about this, but I had this one book of conspiracies and... Stuff about, like, the pyramids, the Bermuda Triangle, Atlantis, aliens... Cigar-shaped aliens, Foo Fighters, sorry, cigar-shaped UFOs, um, and it covered the, um, the Philadelphia Experiment. Vinny, you should read the SCP wiki sometimes, you'd love some of those entries. I've heard. I think I would have liked it more when I was younger. But... If I see it in, like, a game or a movie or, like, some TV show or something like that, some- some way that's just handed to me, I still would enjoy it. But I don't think I'd go out of my way to read through some of those things. Just because I'm lazy. Issue with SCP is also picking out the good ones. I've heard that there's a lot of really good ones, and I've played many games based on SCPs. So... Alright, everybody, that's it. Um... That is everything in this list. I have a text file that has, um... That has some other ones, but I'm pretty sure we covered... Like, did I do Nether? Yep. Mm hmm We did Manhack Playground. Test Wind. Yep, okay, that's it. So, I want to thank you all for watching. I know this isn't for everybody. Not everybody nerds out about Half-Life as much as I do, and... Um... That said, I think there's still something to enjoy in regards to, like, just watching a game... ...as it gets prototyped. You know, iteration after iteration. It's kind of fun to see all these maps... ...how they eventually kind of made it into the game, and most of them didn't. And, uh, more so than that, it just kind of makes me remember why I love Half-Life even more. Um, and hey, we have a new one coming out, which is weird. And, um, ten of us will be able to play it. So, thanks again. And, uh, this was, uh, for me, much more interesting than the first part, where I just picked maps at random. Whereas, um, hang on, I, I liked, uh, I liked these maps better. I think this, this was much more interesting and, uh, got a chance to see some stuff that I had no idea about. Um, someone said there's interesting technology, like combine tech. Uh, I think we saw most of it. Okay. Let's stop here. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you for watching Sunday Stream. And I will see you tomorrow, of course, with more video games. So stop by then. And uh, we have just hit four hours and 20 minutes of streaming.